Kina Nariswa, and this is The Life of Its Land is in Its Real Estate on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we're going to talk about COVID-19's impact on the short terminal market. And I'm lucky enough to have Rick Laporga with Hawaii Ocean Club Realty Group, Inc. here with us to share some, some information. Hi, Rick. Thanks for joining us. Hey, so, aloha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm a local boy, born and raised on this side of Oahu. I'm a West Side guy from Waipahu, and um, you know, love this island. Have you know all my family here, of course, and um, I actually went into tourism as a long-time career as a tour guide. And uh, so being involved with hospitality, I, I enjoyed the tourists and the industry as a whole and sharing Hawaiiana. And um, anyway, it uh, evolved into, um, you know, getting into maybe a profession that, uh, you know, a profession change into real estate, went into like mortgage first and then getting my license and then becoming a, a broker and uh, meeting my wife. She was also in hospitality from Japan. And so that's where the team started with uh, this brokerage of Hawaii Ocean Club Realty. And, um, you know, we have uh, clients from Japan and also, well, most of our clients is not from here, is living, you know, in Japan and mainland US, even as far as Taiwan. Uh, we represent them on that, you know, vacation rental type uh, management. Yeah, doing vacation rentals. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So we always hear about short term rentals. So, what exactly mm -hmm. is a short term rental? Okay. Uh, short term rentals is residential dwellings that would do less than 30 days. A rental. Okay, so uh, there were, I understand, 8,000 to 10,000 vacation rentals on Oahu, and uh, which is a lot, it, a great impact to um, even affecting the hotel industry. So uh, short uh, term rentals, people enjoyed having that option, staying uh, outside of, you know, that hotel type. They want a full kitchen. They want even an extra bedroom for uh, a group, a family, not have to be in that same room, but you know, different rooms and having that privacy. Some wanted to be on, on the beach. So this is the vacation rental uh, experience. And man, it grew to its own animal over over time when you know you have social media and Airbnb and all these booking channels came about with online, man, it just exploded. But uh, short-term rentals are uh, less than 30 days. Um, but also keep in mind that in the uh, taxes, uh, in the, uh, I guess the way you pay your taxes and how it affects uh, that part of it, the accounting part. Uh, if you are long term, which is six months and longer, all you have to do is pay a general excise tax, 4.712%. Anything less than six months would fall under transit accommodation tax. So this is a whopping 10.25%. And that's a big difference in having the identity of uh, what is uh, your responsibility doing this short term. So uh, almost 15%, 14.925% if wow. you're doing less than uh, six months. So, um, but really in the jargon of uh, vacation rentals, you either be nightly or less than 30 days there's extended stays for month to month for corporate and nurses. They, you know, love staying at a furnished unit with the kitchen. And so this is what, you know, uh, in a nutshell, what a 
short-term rental is? No. So Any, anything else? They, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So those taxes are, I assume, what brought on the law a couple of, of years mm -hmm. ago. There was a, a law that kind of went into effect here in, in Oahu. Yeah. Um, yes. So how did that law impact the short-term rental market then? Yes. Okay. What an impact that is because um, it has, uh, you know, a tax, uh, a tax hit uh, uh, or increase of taxes uh, in what you owe. Uh, see, the hotels, they were paying their high taxes and, you know, uh, they, they, they didn't mind vacation rentals, but they thought it wasn't fair that vacation rentals uh, could just pay a, like a residential property tax. They, they thought, well, you know, they're charging so much, they should help out uh, in paying the type of taxes they do. So, uh, and not to go all over the place. So this new law, uh, Bill 89, uh, it, it's referring to the zone, zoning. So there's a resort zone where you can do this uh, short-term rental. Uh, in Waikiki was a great impact because uh, you're looking at um, uh, Kuhio Avenue as the boundary. If you're Mauka side of Kuhio Avenue and the mountain side, that is residential and not falling into a resort zone. The resort zone is from Kuhio towards the ocean side or Makai. And so, uh, oh boy, too bad. There was a lot of vacation rentals that was impacted. They're doing great with their, um, their occupancy, their uh, income was uh, substantially higher because offering vacation rental, but they no longer uh, can, can do that. And uh, maybe later on, we can expound more on numbers in comparison. Uh, did I go all over the place about uh, no, your question? No, not at all. Uh, so okay. have we seen those recover? Have, have we seen a recovery since, um, since the Bill 89 impact? Um, did we start to a see recovery? A recovery? I, absolutely not. Uh, for... Uh, if we're narrowing down a property owner who has a vacation rental, you know, representing this question and all other vacation uh, rental owners that was one time doing it before the bill happened. So uh, before doing it, let's say a one bedroom Waikiki Sky Tower is a great example. It's uh, on just at the Malka or the other side of the resort zone. And so they could do like 170 a night. They would take in like 35 to 4,000 and sometimes even more per month during the vacation rental. So now that they can't do it, they have to go into this long term market. And luckily you get like maybe 1,700 or 1800 a month in comparison. So they were making twice and, and, and three times more on that vacation rental market. So it has a great impact. People cannot recover from that type of income. And uh, uh, yeah, you, you have to run the numbers and see the true um, impact numbers wise, because it, it has the ebb and flow of, um, uh, so if you're doing long-term and if you're, you're 30 days and longer, prop, property tax ID is substantially less yeah. that you're paying on the monthly or for the full year. So let's say if it's $100 a month that they were paying uh, as an, uh, or, or they're paying as an owner occupier with 30 days and more, let's say it's $100 a month, if it was a vacation rental, uh, a property tax would be about four times more, like four hundred dollars per month. So, but you have to, you know, you know, run the numbers. But a substantially higher income on a vacation rental versus going 
to that long term. So never recovered. Your question was, uh, have they recovered? No, is the answer. It's hard to recover that type of numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they still hadn't recovered from the, the bill going into effect. And then yeah. we get hit with COVID-19. So what kind of impact has that had on the short-term rental market? Okay, so uh, COVID-19, it's just another killer itself because uh, doing a vacation rental as a whole, you need vacationers, you need this tourist. Yeah. And the, the numbers are, you know, across the board, way, way lower. And um, uh, let's say with the bill on top of that, vacation rentals even impacted um, not only the homeowners uh, and I would say the uh, homeowners that were doing part of their home as, uh, as a supplement income, uh, they're having a hard time paying their mortgage now. So those are type of uh, transient vacation rentals or bread and, bed and breakfast type, you know, so they're impacted greatly. Uh, the uh, investors who did condo, same thing, that even though they're not living there, it's hard to pay you know, that mortgage maintenance fees and so forth. You know, they needed that high income. And poor people who was involved in handyman and the cleaners involved, management companies losing all this income. Hawaii Ocean Club Realty, I, I think we're about 60 to 70% less or, or uh, down in hitting that. Thank goodness for long-term rentals keeping us alive here. So um, both uh, that bill surely started to bleed. And now it's the, uh, boy, we're in a free fall with this, uh, COVID-19 really impacted altogether, surely, yes. So, so, so what, okay. what did it, it did, it did. I had never actually even thought beyond the owners. I didn't think about the hand mm -hmm. in the cleaners, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, the property managers that, you know, the ripple effect mm -hmm. that it had. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. So what, what are the owners doing to survive the shift? The, the shift okay. in the Okay. You know, that is the key word, a survival mode. It's definitely that. You know, they, you know, the tourists stop coming, the income stop coming for that. So uh, you need to start to at least stop the bleeding. The band-aid would be, you know, your long-term rental market just to pay the bill. So uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, it's really tricky because uh, leading up to winter, we thought it was gonna recover even uh, two months ago. We didn't think you're just like extending, extending, getting worse. The numbers of COVID just you know increasing. So it kept on stopping. And I think even the restaurant industries are all, all of Waikiki hospitality. As a whole, we were just hoping and it, it'll come back. But man, it may take another six months, a year, you know, so, uh, you know, we need, uh, we need that medical help somehow to uh, curb that. Uh, so uh, the survival mode is just getting into that long-term market, anything to uh, pay the bills. And um, the other thing is, of course, just uh, selling it and, you know, going another direction. And of course, if you do go back into the market, do it legally, purchase one that is zone, in the zone of resort and is a legal vacation rental. Man, the fines are a thousand to 10,000, <laughs> crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, they're going after you. And the way they go after you, they look at the advertisement. That's mm -hmm. where they start. And so that's where they're telling these booking channels like Airbnb and others, Verbal, uh, you better tell your clients it has to say uh, 30 days or longer if they're not in that resort zone. And of course, you know, non-conforming certificates is gold, right? 
and you can you, oh. know, you can do vacation <laughs> rentals. <laughs> yeah. So. So now that we have moved into tier two, and we hope we stay there, um, mm -hmm. are you seeing more activity now that um, the tourists are allowed to come back in and vacation uh, rentals are allowed to operate? You know what? Magical. It surely has put some life in here across the board. I mean, restaurants, you know, are able to open and other, you know, small businesses, uh, so um, as tourists start to come in, uh, we've seen an increase on interest in booking uh, vacations coming up to the winter. So that's nice. And of course, it, it'll change probably significantly when Japan rolls around, Japanese visitors coming over here. Um, so uh, I understand a lot of hotels are not operating. My office is at the Imperial Hawaii Resort. And getting an update from them uh, when uh, that took an effect October 15, having negative COVID testing coming over without quarantine with that test, uh, they're about 20% increase. So that's good. I think it's across the board. 20% yeah. is a pretty good number uh, increase in activity. And yeah, uh, yeah so that's good. It's, it's and we've seen it. Nothing. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Now um, you talked about, you know, maybe it's time to sell it. So what does the market look like for buying and selling a vacation rental right now? Okay. Um, so buying and selling, let's look at pre bill 89 or before uh, the, the, this uh, zoning really was out there for a long time. It was more of enforcing it with the steep fines. Yeah. And so last year in October, uh, you would have, um, and, and I have, you know, actually data on a couple places that we, uh, we manage. Like uh, we're talking about the Waikiki Sky Tower, um, pre-Bill 89, and so even pre-COVID, uh, it was selling from uh, mid 400,000 to mid $500,000. And so right now on the six months, it's mid 300s to mid 400. So that's about a hundred thousand dip. Yeah. So it, it is impacted greatly where uh, they could, uh, they was doing vacation rental, but now they know it's illegal. And so they want out and that's the num hard numbers. And uh, so here's another uh, case in point. Uh, the Waikiki Banyan. Um, that's another story in itself about, you know, legal vacation rental because they, <laughs> they're, I think we'll win the battle that they will be a, an exception to that. They're at the other side of Kohio, mm -hmm. at the mountain side. So it's not in that zone, but there may be an exception to the Waikiki Banyan because they were running as a hotel. Yeah. And when the non-conforming certificates was being passed out or when uh, it was permitting, maybe when they built that building, uh, somebody forgot to let them know that we are operating as a hotel. So it never really got listed. So that's where um, uh, they, you know, the hotel has been known. The banning as a condo has been known as running as a hotel since day one. Well, anyway, so the numbers were pre-bill 89, same time last year, 23 sold and they sold fast. It was hot as a vacation rental. Uh, 500,000 to 600,000, one sold at 750,000 last year. Okay, right now you have in post um, bill 89 and now with the COVID, you have six units sitting for 100 to 200 days on market, sitting a long time, you have five of them sitting about two months. So 50 total active sitting for an extended time. And you're talking about comparing the sales price. Uh, right now, it's sold for as low as 400,000 and then going up to maybe around 500,000. Okay, so last year, 
we have 500 to 600,000. This year, 400 to 500,000. You know, same thing, 100,000 dip almost. That's yeah. an impact. So that's where buyer's market, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right. seller's market, yeah, you're, you, you know, you're losing. Yeah. yeah. So I work with a lot of investors. That, that's what my, my, my heart is with the investors. So would you think an investor picking up some short-term rentals now while the prices are low would be a good investment? I mean, we have no crystal balls. We take no responsibility. But what do you um, think um, as, far, as far as an investment? Uh, you have to run the numbers. And while you're going into a down cycle, uh, run the numbers that long term could at least, you know, don't hit a home run. You know, in baseball, you bunt, try to get on base, you do singles, right? Just covering the expenses, okay? You don't want to go negative. You just want to cover your expenses. Yeah. So, um, and when vacation rental keep coming in and getting back to uh, almost like their heyday, uh, yeah, look at the higher uh, return rates, substantially higher. So um, you got to run the numbers carefully because, you know, you have uh, all these, uh, you know, the, the taxes involved. Um, you know, first you could do the uh, uh, 30 days or longer. So you don't have that big uh, tax hit on property tax and then shift it when the next tax cycle comes around and go and do with that vacation rental. Yeah. Of course, you pay the higher tax because you're getting a higher income. So that's a good strategy. And know your building, know what's legal. You have to know that. Of course, you know, you would know as an agent to cover yeah. those bases. Yeah. To do, yeah. You do your due diligence. So yeah. what about cap rates? What I know in a long-term rentals, we're seeing about a 4% cap rate here on the island. What, what's, a cap rate, a good cap rate to see for a short-term rental? Yeah, so uh, just an overview, not to get too of that nitty gritty. Yeah, long-term, you know, two to 4%. And uh, uh, the short-term, yeah, you you know, you'd be cooking, you know, four to five and man, we, uh, or four to 6%. And maybe some would even reach heights to even 8%. You know, um, but I don't think eight percent will come in a long time. Uh, it, you know, I would, yeah, I would say you know, a good return four to six percent is safe to say. Yes. So, mm -hmm. what's the best way to find a good deal on a short-term rental? How how would you oh. how do you tell your clients to get to find a good deal? To find a good deal, man, I tell you, there, there's now a lot out there. But uh, people are, and their agents uh, know that if you're in a legal and resort zone, you know, you're going to demand uh, the higher take and across the board. Uh, so you just have to, you know, it's, uh, you have to dig and lift up every little stones and see what's out there. Um, not too many, not too many is out there. Hawaiian Monarch is unique because it's at the Kohio Mauka end, not in the resort zone, but find out there is an exception to that. I call the Department of uh, Permitting and Planning, uh, Planning and Permitting, DPP and uh, uh, I called them and they they told me that that is a, a legal vacation rental because it was a known fact. And still today, they do have a front desk and operating. So that is one exception. It's an older building. You have to know the nuances because of, uh, you know, older buildings, you know, you, you have a lot of repairs. So you have to um, account for that. And uh, 
no assessments that I know of, but you know, the, it's an old building. So you have to calculate for that. And you can buy it, you know, kind of low. And uh, they do have, uh, you know, you, there's a market for long-term there, of course. Uh, so that helps you uh, as a good investment to know those interesting buildings like Hawaiian Mona exceptions where it's a vacation rental. Like Marine uh, Surf Waikiki is in that resort district on that uh, Makai at Ocean side of Kuhio. Uh, their prices always stayed high. So, you know, you're not gonna get a good deal there. That's for sure, yeah. But yeah. Hawaiian Monarch, yeah, you might find, uh, and you know, you it, there is some uh, lease, a few leaseholds, you can get really inexpensive and then later on, purchase the, the fee mm -hmm. and uh, but you know if fee simple even that is you know substantially lower than others you can still do vacation rentals so you know those are interesting buildings to consider yeah so all right so what's the best advice that you can offer um, somebody who who's thinking about um, investing in the short-term rental market yes okay so Normally, someone who is looking for vacation rentals uh, is obviously not from here. And uh, there's some that, you know, would go into the market that's investors here in Hawaii, but most of which are, you know, mainlanders, because uh, one, they might, it might change the dynamics because they, they want somewhere to stay, especially during the winter time. So we, we have some owners that do that uh, when it's vacant. And they would take the good months, you know, the high income months is winter. They would come over here in the winter. And then we try to find the uh, vacation rentals, yeah. uh, you know, surrounding those months. Uh, so uh, know a vacation uh, rental specialist, I guess, to tell you uh, some of those uh, little uh, tidbits to know numbers have to go across uh, the expenses. Uh, some, some vacation rentals, if you're doing uh, like a Trump Tower, it might be super low in price and purchase, but I tell you, they would take like 70% of your earnings. You know, 50% already as like a management fee. And there's, you know, other fees involved, you know, um, uh, their reserves, uh, their um, advertising fees, fees, fees after fees. And, you know, uh, we, we got out of escrow knowing that we would be losing 400 a month, even if we self-manage uh, a Trump studio, which, you know, was kind of low at 350, 350,000. Yeah. For Trump, you know, that's unheard of. We thought, oh, that's a good deal, you know, do a purchase. But yeah, we ran the numbers, even if it's self-managed. Yeah, you're, we're still about four to five hundred dollars negative. Wow. Some uh, vacation rentals, you have to go into the rental pool, so you have to look at that too. Um, you have to get one that you can self-manage. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. So, All right. Yeah, it's good to know a, a vacation rental specialist. And yeah, no, I, I can recommend that. one. <laughs> so if <laughs> I recommend a good guy. want to contact you, please reach out <laughs> to me. I can connect you with Rick because yes. I would love for um, to answer any of your questions on short-term rentals. <laughs> and I'm sure he can uh, get you all the answers. make a good team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us. And I learned a ton. I think our viewers did too. Um, and again, this is Keena Nisley um, with The Life of the Beautiful. Land Real Estate. Thank you, Think Tech Hawaii. And in a couple of weeks, I will be back. It'll be Veterans Day and I have the military to millionaire um, is going to um, be here to share with us how he has been an active duty Marine and a successful investor all in one. So I can thank you so much, Rick, and I will see you all in a couple weeks. <laughs>